And now for something completely different. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to to Cinematic Relief. I'm Thunder. And I'm Lightning. I'm just so excited to talk yeah. about all the things we, we have to talk about. You and I about. haven't really talked about... Are you excited about the movie or the various other things all, we're Just all about? of it. Yeah. It's, yeah. You and I haven't... Uh, oh, oh, I think I know one of the things he's excited for. I wasn't even thinking about that. We'll get oh, to him. Okay. We'll all get right. to him. Um... Uh, you and I didn't really talk much. I think we kind of uh, went our separate ways that night after we watched the movie. Yeah. But um, I've seen this movie before. This was your first I time watching it. Yes. It's uh, a running it's theme. Yeah. Either, right. either, <laughs> either we go to the theaters to see a movie or one of us has seen it. In Yeah, right, right. Um, tell me, what did what did you think? Um, so I have a hard time. Um, what's the fucking word? Um. Oh my god, what's the word when like y- I like a thing and I think you like a thing? So I you you share the the thing with no, me. No, it's <laughs> it's recommend. Oh, recommend. That's the word. Yeah, yeah. Uh I have a hard time recommending things that are so gory. Yeah, for you and I, I don't know if, uh, for our movie podcast. I don't think we've ever talked about this before. We're not particularly gore fans. No. I can do it if it looks super fake. Let's put it this way. We watched Game of Thrones. I think there's a few things in Game of Thrones, knowing that they're there, I might look away at. Yeah. Um, besides that, we're not gore fans. This movie tended to have a little, it went a little extra mile with the gore and aspect. And it, it honestly just shows... Um, it's her face, right? That's what gets you? No, the face I didn't mind because it looked super fake. Yeah, okay. The special effects. But um, no, it just shows the um, um, the growth, quote unquote, of James Gunn. I, I guess... And by growth, I mean he used to make movies for him, and now he makes yeah. movies for Marvel and DC. Right, right. Um, but, like, there's sort of two James Gunns, and I just said them. There's the one that he does whatever he wants. Usually those movies are filled with gore. Brightburn was filled with gore. Oh, but yeah. But Brightburn was a horror film, right. so I was expecting it. Um, and then there's, you know, and then there's Guardians of the Galaxy, and the new Suicide Squad will probably be fine. Um, but this one was definitely, like, post guardians like i just made slither also th- worth mentioning this guy has like four people that he's friends with yeah and they're in all that's of that's what films. we wanted to mention oh is that what we wanted to and mention? that's what we wanted to mention is james gunn's james gunn has like four friends yeah. and they're in all of his movies literally this movie it had his brother the one who plays rocket raccoon it had nathan fillion who was you know in uh wait a minute in other stuff brad what's his name is James Gunn. No, 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 no. Bradley Cooper voices Rock Raccoon. Sean Gunn puppets oh, him. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Sean Gunn like mocaps him or whatever you call it. Oh. Um, but he also I plays. I thought Sean Gunn was his cousin. His brother. Oh, they're brothers. I the, thought they were cousins. No, there's a third one. The cousin. He's the one who wrote Brightburn. Uh, gotcha. Yep. Yep. I yep. don't remember his first name. I apologize. Um. Uh, Mike Rooker. No, yeah, there's Michael Rooker, who's never the main character, but he's no. in all of them. Which, he'd make an awesome main character. Yeah. Um, there's Nathan Fillion, who's also never the main <laughs> character, but it's in all of them. There's... Uh, Even the cop, or was that Nathan? No, the no, cop. No. The cop was he, Peter Quill's dad. Yeah. He, he, that, that, actor, dad, that actor only moves when James Gunn tells him to. Uh, uh, Peter uh, Quill? Yeah, what did I say? You said his dad. His dad is oh, none no, other his, than his grandfather. Actor. What's his name? Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. No, he's his his grandfather. Yeah. I literally, when I was talking to my friend Jen about this film, she mentioned how she really likes Slither, and literally, I fucking look up Slither, and turns out the four people in Slither are Nathan Fillion, <laughs> no. Elizabeth Banks, the mom from Brightburn, Greg Henry, the grandfather from Guardians of the Galaxy, and Michael Rooker. <laughs> I got to tell you, <laughs> I I kind of like that he keeps it in the family. I kind of I can appreciate that. No, it's 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 sort of like a. All right, when's Michael Rooker gonna show up? Yeah, no, <laughs> I mean Mel Mel Brooks did it. Uh, I mean Tyler granted, Perry was, did it. Also. Yeah, yeah, and it's you get friends, you get people you know you work well with in the industry, and I can respect that. But uh, I actually this is this goes off of what one of the things we wanted to mention is uh, we will be your friends. James Gunn. <laughs> we have no issue. We'll hang out with you. You seem like a good guy. That guy doesn't hey, want us to be friends guys, with James listen, Gunn. We're recording it's ho- here. It's the hottest it's been all year. We have the window open. Sue us. Yeah. They, Literally sue us. We have a giant neon sign that it's red when <laughs> we're recording. It says it's, live. People yeah. don't seem to Jeez. notice it. <laughs> um, 
Um, <laughs> no, that's my whole, like, every time a new actor came on screen, I was just like, I'll be your friend. <laughs> like, it seems like you have four friends. Also, side note, you seem like a cool dude. Yeah, you, you see, make some he was movies also in the movie. Definitely. Like, yeah, he was also in the movie. He played Satan. I would, like, even if I wasn't, you know, because I don't want it to sound like, you just want to be friends with him because you're going to get stuff out of it. Seems like he'd be an interesting, cool dude to hang out with. Yeah. Even if he's like, you're not going to be in a movie, I'm not going to read your scripts. I'd be like, all right. But, but I will play I Mario wanna... Kart with you. Yeah, I, I'll play <laughs> Mario Kart with you, James Gunn. But, you know, that the that other stuff would be nice. But I would just be James Gunn's friend. Are you kidding me? Even if you got nothing out of it, he seems like a cool guy. Yeah. So, um, this movie is clearly, like... James Gunn's own, you know, creation. Yeah. But it's obviously derivative of things like Kick Ass mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But it's it's basically for people who haven't seen Oh, by the way, if you're wondering how we watch this, it's not on Netflix no. or HBO Go or Disney Plus. Um, it's currently on demand. If you have uh Showtime, Showtime's yeah. running it on demand. So that's yeah. how we watched it. It was totally free, uh, which was like super surprising. I think we, and it's funny because it must have very recently gone up for f- for free on there because we looked it up once before and it just wasn't. Oh, did we? Yeah. It was a while ago, but we did. Well, I think it used to be on Netflix, so I think you expected it to be on Netflix. Right. Um. But yeah, it's, it's basically like, hey, I'm a regular dude and, and we're all regular people, but what if I was a superhero? <laughs> And the joke. Is, see, here's the thing. It's, it's definitely like, this movie is like, um, what's the word? Advertised as a comedy. Yeah. And like, there were funny moments for sure, but like, it wasn't necessary. Like, there wasn't any more funny moments than Guardians of the Galaxy. You know. Yeah. And it wasn't like, I wouldn't call this a comedy. I would call this like a, what do you call it? Like a, a, action. No. Well, yeah, action. But like, I mean, like. More th- more so than being a comedy, it felt like it had a message to tell. Okay. Um, and I can appreciate that. I can respect that. Um, but I just I don't know. I have a hard time. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, I wouldn't say oh comedy. I'd say action adventure superhero movie. You know. Okay. And this movie, I'd say like message movie action drama with some funny bits. Okay. But I feel like the trailers are like, well, look at this guy. I've never seen him, but I I I feel like. This movie was like, if you look this up on Wikipedia, it'll be like comedy. Yeah, and it was, you know, it was just, it was very interesting. It I wasn't think it's because like it had. I think sometimes movies get put into a category because of the actors in it. Like they'd Rain Wilson and Ellen Page as the mm. main characters, two comedian actors. Mm, well, no, Ellen Page is more into dramas. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I feel like this movie falls in the same place Juno would. It's kind of quirky. Yeah, but I wouldn't but goof- see. I also you know, wouldn't goofy. I also wouldn't consider Juno a comedy. Okay, I like. I've only seen that movie once, and I and that was in high school. Yeah, so I don't really remember. But it's good. I haven't seen that movie in a while. Um, yeah, the um, so this movie stars Rain Wilson, Ellen Page, Kevin Bacon, and Liv Tyler, who are <laughs> basically four actors who break what I said. <laughs> who are not usually in James Gunn films. Yeah. Um, but the former three, Rain Wilson, Ellen Page, and Kevin Bacon, I thought did a great job. Oh, yeah. I think Kevin Bacon is like, like found himself as like a old man villain character archetype. Like he was that in X-Men First Class, and he was probably the best part of that shitty film. Um, and I think I think he's great in that. I thought Rain Wilson at first was a little weird, but I think that's just because Rain Wilson is a little weird, but it really works for the... He also was the... playing a weirdo. He was, uh, yeah, he's a weird <laughs> dude who usually gets weird roles, and he was playing one this time. Um, and Ellen Page's character seems more normal than he is, but then you, you know, yeah. you find out that she's also got her own separate issues. It was really just like, what if Kick-Ass was a lower budget movie than Kick-Ass was, and all the people who were trying to be superheroes had, like, mental health issues. Yeah. Like, undiagnosed mental health issues. Um, and I thought it played well. I thought it was a good movie. Me too. Uh, fair to note that this, speaking of Brightburn and James Gunn, this is the other movie in the yeah. what, what Could Be series, uh, which, which is interesting because something you and I, I think the only thing you and I talked about was 
Brightburn, the kid from Brightburn, is yeah. evil Superman. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about right. it. He literally, James Gunn gave him, or yeah, the people who wrote that movie gave him all Superman's yeah. powers. And in in a universe where there's only two characters so far, one a uh, villain, one a good guy, the, the other guy is simply Rain Wilson yeah. in a superhero costume with no powers, but he does have a wrench. <laughs> <laughs> Has, that's, the good, that's a good point. Dad, spoiler alert, Dad at the end of Brightburn tries to shoot Brightburn kid doesn't work. Did he try wrench? He didn't try wrench. He didn't try wrench. <laughs> but, uh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, what? What's up? Because uh, cause you and I were sitting here like, well, Brightburn kill, kid kills Rain Wilson in a second. Unless uh, the guy from Super, Rain Wilson, gets a wrench made out of that kid's spaceship. Then that kid is effed in the B. That, uh... That's you're writing this movie. <laughs> what is this movie called? Is it called Brightburn Two or is it called? Uh, oh God, what's the? Okay, is it called Frank v. Uh, oh, Brightburn Frank, Kid, huh? Dawn of Justice? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Well, I think you nailed it. I think one of these movies was essentially an indie movie. The other one did pretty well, and that's Brightburn. Mm. I think we're gonna get a Brightburn Two. If Brightburn Two does well, I think we're gonna get a third villain or hero, like a Wonder Woman, Martian Manhunter, yeah, type. And I think James Gunn is a little smarter than the people at DC. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, we get another introductee, and maybe at the end of that movie we get we get a, sp- uh, not a spoiler. Uh, in, another, uh, like, end credit scene. Yeah, for um, the three of them merging. And yeah. I think you get, like, a Justice League or an Avengers. He's going to have his own name for what's going to happen here. And then maybe, because here's the thing, the he, James Gunn does not have... The money DC or Marvel does to put on these movies, right? I think we're gonna have to live with the fact that other characters are gonna get introduced in this in, uh, Justice League. Mm. I ma- just don't. Meet up. I just don't want. So you could definitely tell that without even looking it up that the budget on Brightburn is way more than Super. Oh yeah. But I, what I really don't want is Glass. Have you seen Glass? Or any I of haven't the other... seen any of them, but I know that they're so connected. Unbreakable is a movie from like. Like sixteen years ago, and yeah. it's very good. Maybe you know, in my opinion, one of M Night Shyamalan's best films. Um, and then Split, that was an action drama. No, it wasn't even really action; it was just sort of a drama. Um, and then Split is a horror movie from twenty sixteen. And then they were like, they're in the same universe. Let's make a movie with all three of them. And it wasn't great. And that's like not a hot take. A lot of people were like, "Wow, this wasn't good." Yeah. Um. And it does a really what it what it fails to do the most is the big like now we're all fighting finally scene. Okay, it's just like it's poorly shot, it's poorly choreographed. It's just it just doesn't like it's not what I wanted, you know. Sure, and I'm, sure. I'm I'm, I'm with with Brightburn Kid being so powerful and uh, Frank from S- Frank or Hank? I think Frank. Frank from Super being just a dude. I really don't want, and with the movie's budget not being, like, as you said, comparable to a Marvel or DC superhero movie, which was the case with Glass, um, I just don't want, like, a mundane, not a mundane, but, like, a a lackluster, like, conclusion in so far. Here's one other thing we haven't really uh, considered on Frank's end. Something I don't know if uh, James Gunn is going to touch on. Domino from Deadpool. Her yeah. simple superpower is luck. The whole joke is that's not going to look good. Right. Um, Frank doesn't have luck, but he is touched by God. See, I thought, because I didn't know jack shit about this movie other than yeah. the fact that Rain Wilson and Ellen Page were in it, um, and I knew about the you know, the controversial scene, but we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> um, when he had the vision from God and God like took his tentacle and like opened his brain and touched his brain and then his brain started to like electrify, I, I was sitting there like, oh, this is how he gets his powers. Like he's going to have powers and that's how right. he got his powers. But it, he didn't. So maybe I think what you're saying is maybe he does and we don't know about it. Yeah. Well, maybe uh, not even that they're powers, but just that, you know, he kinda, he's he's got the Lord on his side. Oh, you know what I, mean? I see what you're saying. Like when it comes down to like. Like, I'm God, I'm watching this play down. Oh yeah. shit, Frank and Brightburn Brightburn <laughs> is about to kill Frank. Let he me just gets lucky. Him. Yeah. He could yeah. just get lucky a bunch of times. Yeah. Which 
it doesn't sound that's good, but of, then you see Domino from Deadpool, and it's like, that's, g- yeah. that's pretty cool. That's no, pretty that's fun. kind of interesting. If your superpower is literally divine intervention, yeah. that could be neat. Yeah. I could I could, I could And, be that, and I that. wouldn't put it past James Gunn to be like, this character has divine intervention. Right. That's his one power, and I'm going to make it interesting. Especially because if you think about it, like, you know, God exists in this world. Yeah. Brightburn Kid is an alien from space, right. and I don't think whatever god is could have seen that coming right so i think if if there was ever a point where he would be like ah, i'll i'll help <laughs> this one wasn't fair <laughs> so i'll help you guys out um that could be interesting also nobody's nothing even though we only have two movies and it's mm. super and brightburn th- there's no rule that says uh frank has to be the main hero Right, yeah. You know, he could get lucky, but it couldn't it could be realistic. No, I'm thinking, yeah, I was thinking like we touch in on Brightburn's version of Martian Manhunter and he maybe he starts out evil but he turns good at the yeah. end and then the movie is Martian Manhunter Brightburn versus Brightburn kid, uh Brendan Byers, that's his name. Yes, yeah. Uh and then Frank can also be there, but he can sort of be like and Ant-Man, but not... So, remember in Civil War when Ant-Man's like, whoa, I'm here too. Everything's a joke that yeah. I say. But then he actually beats some ass in the yeah. airport fight. Um, just don't have that part. With the part where he beats some ass. Just have right. him, like, be the joke. Well, the other thing, too, is... Um, Frank, at the end of the movie, doesn't consider himself special. He just saved somebody who's special. Maybe Frank's the the rescue. You know, maybe he's the person who comes in saves the lives, and that's it. That's all he does. Maybe he shelters the main hero. That would be an interesting parallel to the Flash in the Justice League movie because the the scene in Brightburn where Michael Rooker's, char- Michael Rooker's <laughs> character is showing the graphic of all the people, there's literally like Batman, Brightburn, Wonder Woman, Martian Man, Hunter, and where the Flash should be, it's super. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that would draw an interesting parallel because in the Justice League movie, the there's a big, huge scene uh, like a huge story moment for the Flash where he's like, I can't do this. And Batman's like, just save people. You don't have to fight anything. Just save people. Yeah. And then he does that. So I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. A it, very a very intentional nod to uh, the not so great Justice League movie. Totally. And it, it, it would make his character more believable. He's still in the in the realistic world of this is the most I can do. But 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 I got God on my side. Mm. So we're going to be OK. Um, then you could even you could even have an Age of Ultron moment where like Brightburn or whatever we're fighting s- notices that no one's bothering Frank and he's doing his thing and yeah. then he's just like that sucks I'm gonna stop that and then he does and Frank's dead and it's like oh my god yeah yeah I think that would be Rain Wilson's f- no uh, spoiler for the Meg he does <laughs> oh <laughs> I'm not going to ever watch that movie so. yeah well yeah I mean. <laughs> Because you have the same thing I have where you don't like the ocean, right? It's scary. I, dude, okay. Have you ever, tangent, side tangent, have you ever seen the movie Fantasia 2000? No, actually. Have you seen the original Fantasia? A long time ago. Okay, so Fantasia 2000 is a shorter rehash of Fantasia, uh, so much so that the Sorcerer's Apprentice is still in there for some reason. But other than that, all the rest of them are new ones. And there's a whale one. And I, like, when I'm watching that, I, like, tense up and, like, cringe. But here's what's interesting. So the whales are in the ocean, right, and they're doing their whale thing, not threatening anybody <laughs> except me. And I'm just like, uh, oh, God, oh, I hate whales. And then there's a moment in that that uh, that piece of music where they all the whales fly out of the water, and now they're floating in air. And I was like, oh, this is fine. No, it's a phobia. I have the same thing. You have a fear of the deep ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what it's called. We could look it up if yeah. you want. But once the whales uh, were like flying to the sun, I was like, "Oh, this is fine." Yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's some it has something to do with not knowing what's underneath you in the water. Um, I I think mine personally is yeah. more with big things in the water. Yeah, I just don't like. No, I have. I definitely have that too. It's There's a creepy. game. Th- uh, same situation. There's a game called Abzu. If you've ever played Journey, it's basically Journey but underwater, and it's basically just like an auto walker but you're swimming where you just like walk from one end of the game to another but the storytelling contrivances are like done with all the things you're interact interacting with quote unquote Mm. 
and I never beat that game because there's a part where a whale is just like, mm, whale, and I'm just like, no, oh, no, no, it wasn't supposed to be scary, and it was. Oh, there's like 40 whales. Oh, I got to go. If it's cartoonish, are you more easy? Are you more relaxed with it? No, absolutely not. Interesting. There's no more relaxed <laughs> when it comes to giant sea monsters. See, I've gotten a little better with it um, as I got older. Do you, in, in Super Mario 64, there's an underwater submarine. Oh, yeah. you've never played that. No, you have played no, that I've game. No, I've played that game. There's an underwater submarine. I hated that as a kid. That used to, like, gross me out. It was a gross feeling. You mean the big fish? No, there's a submarine in one of the levels. Also a sunken ship. Hated both of them. Interesting. Hated yeah, I don't have a problem with those. Uh, I don't I don't think I got to the submarine. I thought you were going to mention the big, giant, scary eel. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But su- yeah, he he sucks and <laughs> everything like that in that game. I did not like. Yeah, see, I think it's new for me because oddly enough, that didn't bother me as a kid, but it oh, it bothers me now. Every time they bring that creepo back, I'm like, uh, interesting. Yeah, I I and the whale in Finding Nemo. I remember not bothering me, even though they fucking almost die inside it. <laughs> yeah, the older I get, the the less it is. I think it's getting uh. I think you're starting to get it. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Um, it has nothing to do with Super. No, absolutely not. Um, it killed a good six minutes, though. Yeah. Uh, maybe we could put a timer if you don't <laughs> want to listen to me and Anthony's shared phobia. No, they know what they're getting at the end of this. <laughs> they're going to stick around till like, till we touch in with Evie. <laughs> um, speaking of which, is there much more you wanted to talk about with, with Super? Um, No, but I do want to talk about... Uh, oh, f- our boy. Okay, so, okay. So here's what happens. Here's what happened. Um, we were watching Super, and you know, Super's about you know, kick ass. The real, real life people being like, I could be a superhero. You can't. You can't be a superhero. And then I was like, um, just offhandedly, because I, for some reason, I assumed Chris knew who this was. I was like, doesn't it suck that Phoenix Jones got caught with a bunch of drugs? And Chris <laughs> was like, what the fuck are you talking about? So I assumed it was a singer with that name, to be honest. Yeah, no. So Phoenix Jones is a real life superhero. Yeah, in uh, San Francisco, from right? San. <laughs> I think it might be San. D- no, hang on. Hold on. Hold. Oh, on. we're holding on. You're all gonna hear about Phoenix Jones right now. Phoenix Boom. Jones, where? Where? Oh, Texas. No, yeah, it's it's San. It's tell oh, me it's in where, Texas. Tell me where you are. I thought it was California. It's Seattle, Washington. I don't know why it said wow. Texas. He's from Texas. He was born in Texas. It's Seattle, Washington. There's a there's a movement in Seattle, Washington called the Rain City Superhero Movement, and it's led by Phoenix Jones, a real life dude who like dresses up like a phoenix and puts on a cowl and and fucking gets out there, wears a bulletproof thing, and fights crime. Um, so and, hold on, it's a movement. So there's more. Yeah, there's a couple like lesser known ones. That's really cool. But Phoenix Jones is like the one who started it. And Phoenix Jones also, if I may, has the most elaborate get up uh costume. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and on May 29th, 2014, Phoenix Jones officially declared that the Rain City superhero movement was over. So, oh. whatever. Um yeah. Did somebody die? No, I don't know. Dude, ah, no, we're not going to talk about it on air, but like it's it's coming along. Green Reaper, The Mantis, Thunder 88, Midnight Jack, Purple Rain, but Rain is spelled like you would rain a, a oh, cool, over a kingdom. Cool. El Caballero, uh, The Mantis, mm, I don't know about that one. Yeah, uh, some of the, that one's copywritten. <laughs> that one's copywritten, um, Marvel Comics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, and he, he, like, I've seen interviews with him and stuff, and he just, like, does what Kick-Ass does, or what Super does, but... Like a month ago, he was caught not only, uh, what's it called when you're holding it? Holding? Is that what it's really called? Yeah. He, not only holding drugs, but also selling drugs. Yeah. Uh, which sort of sucks. And it, it sucks oh. that I had to tell, like, I was like, Chris, isn't I got this cool? so hyped. You yeah. almost changed my life in that moment. <laughs> and then you were like, but he got, and then I was like, oh, nothing's real. Yeah. Uh, I'll yeah, s- Pauline had an interesting thought. Okay, she instantly because I was telling her I was like he's super cool till he got caught with drugs and she was like what if he was framed? Well, what if he was framed, Anthony? The one superhero in in, in the the whole world. You're telling me a uh, villain, a bad guy, isn't going to try to frame him for something? Um, did he have a reasoning? 
for selling these drugs. On January 9th, 2020, Jones was arrested for for allegedly selling meth. Meth then is like a whole paragraph worth of letters for the real <laughs> name for meth. Mm-hmm. Uh, selling meth to an undercover police officer. At the time of his arrest, police, al- police alleged that he and his accomplice were also in possession of about four grams of cocaine. Hmm. Can I talk about Rex Velvet? Yeah. My favorite thing to come out of the me knowing about stuff over the last month. There's a villain. There's one villain, a self-proclaimed villain. His name is Rex Velvet, and he fucking... He, he looks like... How would you describe this dude? Like, if Doctor Who was evil, like this guy just he like, looks like he looks like. Um, did you say Doctor Evil? I said Doctor Who. He looks like Doctor Evil if he had an eye patch and a mustache and hair. Yeah, and hair. Just that aesthetic. He's he, just yeah. very villain. He's um, he's a he's a uh, what happened? Com- comicbooks.com. Something you said, and I thought you and I already knew. Yeah. 20 minutes ago, breaking, Marvel is bringing Guardians of the Galaxy to four, to Thor 4. I thought that was... Yeah, we, we knew, knew that. that. Yeah. We knew that. They're just trying Guardians, to get... Gar- Thor's not going to be in Guardians 3. Guardians are going to be in Thor 4. Right. That's, we already knew that. Interesting. That, that was confirmed a while ago by, uh, I think, James Gunn on well, Twitter. They're just catching up. Anyways, um, James Gunn? No, other dude. Taika Waititi. Anyways, both. Who cares? Um... Um, no, he's like a slender dude with a cane and a scar yeah. over his eye and an eye patch. Uh, and like a uh, 007 villain come to life. Yeah, it's basically. Awesome. Yeah, that's a perfect. He's a 007 villain, but he's totally fake. He's a what did you call him? He's a, a per- troll. He's no, no, no. You had a word for it, like his occupation. He's a performing, oh, performing artist. Yeah, per- definitely. he's a performing artist. Kind of like uh, Vermin Supreme or that ho- that guy who pretends to be homeless and says perf- Profanities? No, no, no. Oh. Um, prophetic. Uh, prophetic? I think so. P- prophecy type. You know. Yeah, prophetic is the right word. Yeah. Uh, and, and then clucks like a chicken. But oh. it's all. But he. But he's an artist. He's doing but he's it. A, yeah. Yeah. Because. I just there's a video. It's called like, it's literally called like Rex Velvet calls out Phoenix Jones, <laughs> and it's like he's also um d- done a Pearl Jam music video. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he's been doing for the past three years. Um, no, the video is basically like really cool until he shows his face at the end, and you're like, "Oh, this is like a twenty year old dude <laughs> who's just who's just playing dress up." Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry. I had to hand hand you such bad news. No, I mean, I definitely want to look more into it. Also, um. Can you say Rex Velvet isn't a real villain? If a vi- if a real life villain came out in 2020, would it not take the form of a giant internet troll? Of course it would, but then you have to like actually do commit a things. crime. Yeah. yeah, you actually have to like like, like rob a bank or you so know, so he's more a of a, water main. a heckler <laughs> than a villain. <laughs> yeah, he's basically just a. Uh, let's forget the performing artist aspect for a second. Let's yeah. assume that Rex Velvet is real. Uh, he's basically just at this point like a critiquer. Yeah. Like he's not Phoenix Jones like arch villain, arch rival m- main villain. He's just like a-, a guy who like is like ah Phoenix Jones. He, sucks. he saw a position and he filled it. Yeah. <laughs> and he filled it well for those four and a half minutes yeah. in that video. <laughs> oh, I just love him so much. If you're listening, if you're out there, oh Rex so Velvet. you know what? I'm just making connections. Sure. Maybe Phoenix Jones. So you said he's they officially ended in 2014. Yeah, the whole like movement. But I think Phoenix Jones has been oh okay. at it this whole time. I think I'm not sure because if he wasn't and he dropped the whole Phoenix Jones thing and then was like, well, I need to make money, then I I don't get it. Like he shouldn't have done that. But right. like. I, it just that in makes my, more in my sense mind. I'm like, he's getting out of the costume to go sell meth around the corner. Yeah, and it's like y- you have a weird dynamic here, my dude. What are you doing? We'll look more into it. We'll look more into it. Yeah, for sure. He, um, yeah, no, he was he was cool, and it was it was one of those things where like, no, uh, like from time to time I would just think about it, and I'm like, oh yeah. There's a fucking real life superhero <laughs> that I could like probably go meet at Seattle Comic Con. Probably. Um, do you think he'd do that? 
Or do you think, Probably. like... Probably. I found a picture of him with his mask off without even trying. No, 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 no. I know. Like, there's, there's no identity anymore, which is also an interesting arc. This guy is interesting <laughs> arc. Um, like, it kind of went down <laughs> like it would in a movie. We, we won't get into it because, you know, look it's it up. It's not what it's the... Yeah. Yeah. But, uh... But, um... Like, do, do you think that would be an abuse of his, uh, for lack of a better term, celebrity? Because he's a hero. He he has better things he should be doing on his day off. No, they do that shit all the time in, like, superhero parody movies. Like, have you ever seen Megamind? But he's not a parody. No, 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 no. I'm saying, like, 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 they'll, in, in parody movies of, of superheroes, they'll, like, do that. Where they're like, ah, oh, now I'm at Comic-Con, and, like, I do think that that would happen. Like, maybe not, like, let's say we were in the MCU, right? Maybe not the important ones who are, like, busy all the time, like the fucking Hulk and Iron Man. But, like, I think Ant-Man and the Wasp are definitely rolling up on Seattle Comic-Con. No, like, sure, hey guys. sure, but we're not in a world where the Hulk and Captain uh, America, they, they don't exist. This this is just Phoenix Jones, the dude. Yeah. Who, like, what if somebody really doesn't like what he's doing and they stab... Like, what I'm saying is I don't think he's going to put himself in positions where, you know, somebody could hurt him, somebody... I don't think he's going out into the to the limelight. I think he's doing what he has to do. Realizes he's a real life person, yeah. And people are gonna try to find him and stuff like that, even if it's just to say hi. I see what you're saying, but I don't think he's gonna even try to find those venues where you can do that. I see what you're saying. Even if you're Phoenix Jones, a quote unquote superhero, but you don't have superpowers and you're just a dude, you should act like you're a real superhero, and people are gonna like, like. Try and get you. Somebody might try to hurt him. Yeah. And I don't think he's going to go out of his way to find situ like put himself in a place where people are A, going to know him, B, want to take pictures, and like C, somebody could come up, stab him in the back. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I, and, and to a further extent, I think he wants to, I think he wants his superhero persona to be taken seriously. Yeah. Well, he's, well, I mean, assuming he's. He is what he says he is, and not just a drug dealer in disguise. Which, by the way, <laughs> I don't want to be j- like the real life J. Jonah Jameson. This guy could have been set up. This There's a million could've... things that could have happened to this guy. Well, d- he could have been set up, but also he could have been a drug dealer in disguise the whole goddamn time. He also that, but I don't listen. Listen, we're making ourselves part of this real life superhero story. <laughs> I don't want to be on the bad side of it. He, he, I, I'm, I'm gonna stay neutral. Oh yeah, I, no, I, I, I don't care. I really want to believe in Phoenix Jones. <laughs> But, but he also that he could have done something bad. But I don't want you know in those movies. There's always a reporter who's like, "This guy sucks now," and he's just <laughs> at home like, "No." Yeah, I don't want to be that guy. God, the fucking I want to stay neutral. X Men, X Men, Dark Phoenix did such a bad job of doing that. Like X Men, Dark Phoenix starts in like the reality where the X Men are like really cool and like they have a direct line to the president and then one of them fucks up once <laughs> and then everybody hates them and the president's like you can no longer call this line it's being disconnected and i was like oh man <laughs> this is this is where x-men ended up anyways <laughs> um that's what we thought of super have you ever wondered what roger ebert thought of super he saw it yeah oh i'm so excited <laughs> You got to do the song, though. Do, 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 do. He wrote a review, and then he wrote some more, and then he wrote too many. It's Roger Ebert reviews. I almost forgot that. I haven't done it in so long. Welcome to Roger Ebert's Critic Corner, a podcast within a podcast. I am your host, as always, Anthony. Joining me today is my one-time-only guest, Thunder, from Thunder and Lightning Gaming. I'm not Thunder. Also, oh, one-time only. I think I'm on all of them. That's the bit. That's the bit I always do. I'm Lightning. <laughs> I know. That that was a fuck-up. I thought you say my always guest. No. Do I? I don't know. I thought the I I recall the bit I was going for was it's an every and anyways doesn't <laughs> matter. Ja- uh, J- yeah, James Gunn. Roger Ebert saw Super just like we did. How many stars do you think he gave it? Just as a reminder, if people are listening for the first time, Roger Ebert, like the lunatic that he was, God rest his soul, gave scores out of four. Uh half. Half a one star. Yep. Oh, you uh. You 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 hurt Roger Ebert. He gives this movie two stars. Oh, so for those of you listening at home who don't know how his reviews work, <laughs> that could be anywhere between twenty five percent and fifty percent <laughs> that he enjoyed this movie. No, I think it's like thirty five. Thirty five and fifty. That's where 
uh, he puts this movie, which if you're thinking, hmm, that means he could have half liked it or he could have thought it kind of <laughs> sucked, you're absolutely if you're right. you're thinking to yourself, that's a pretty vague way of describing yeah. <laughs> if you liked the movie in shorthand. Uh, here's what he has to say about it. Super is being sold as a comedy, but I doubt it will play that way. It begins as the... Wait, did did he write that sentence before he went to see it? Uh, no. I I don't know. Probably not. Uh, it begins as the portrait of a lovable loser named Frank, and it end and as it ends, we're pretty sure he's an insane, ruthless killer. Thanks for spoiling it. That's not a joke. Maybe writer-director James Gunn intended as a joke, but after the camera lingers on the younger heroine with a third of her face blown off, it's hard to laugh. Spoilers, ahoy. Does he say that? No, I'm saying that he just spoiled like every bit of thing oh, I know. could spoil from this. I know. That's why, and, and you're reading this, wanting a review of what he thought. Now you don't have to see the movie. Right, yeah, that, that kind of it sucks. It sucks when he explains the movie. Just This, this don't. movie, by the way, came out in 2011, so this is like peak, like right at the end. I, I've said it a thousand times, I'll say it again. Because Roger they, Ebert died in 2013. Oh, okay. Um, this podcast is not a review podcast. No. This is our this is our thoughts on the movie. He is a, a review and a critic. I'm literally in the review section right. of his website. Don't ruin the movie. If you're gonna yeah. do a review on the movie, don't tell your expes- thoughts and leave it. Especially don't ruin the movie in the first fucking right. paragraph. That's what I'm saying. If you want to have a section of review, which he's usually good about. I mean, a section of uh, of plot summary. Yeah, which he have usually, a sec- which he usually does, <laughs> yeah. and I can, you know, if you're really gonna do it, have a section for it. Don't start your review off explaining all the major plots of this movie. Sorry, <laughs> I quite understand that this could all be seen as an ironic commentary on audience expectations. When Ellen Page of Juno stars in a movie, we don't much expect to see her brains dripping. But let's face it, most audiences have little appetite for irony about themselves. One possible way to like the movie might be to observe how unenjoyable it is for people expecting something funny and upbeat, but that would be unkind. For the first time ever in the history of us reading these, Roger Ebert just humbled himself. He literally was like, this is how I think it'll be perceived but I'm not going to say that. Like, that's the, literally the first time that in any way he's backed up. And he's like, maybe maybe <laughs> it's just me who thinks this. Uh, Rain Wilson, st- okay, this is plot. Uh, plot, wow, he talks about the eggs for a long time. Uh, it's like a two-minute scene of that movie. Maybe not even. Uh, this is, yeah, so, he, so he's talking about, this is a lot of plot. There's like four paragraphs of plot. He's talking about the whole deal of the big ranch, the drug dealers, the, you know, the sidekick recruit stuff. This isn't necessarily funny. It approaches humor, however, with the work, with the work by Rain Wilson and Ellen Page, and with a cool mocking detachment of the Kevin Bacon character, who visits as, visits as if an ambassador from another better movie. There's something I like very much about Wilson, who plays an unaffected klutz with about as much grace and humor as possible. He never seems to be trying to be funny, and that's a strength. But what can he do with this screenplay? Setting aside the details of the plot mechanics, <laughs> which I just went over for four paragraphs, <laughs> um, setting aside the details of the plot mechanics, Jacques, his gated minions, his henchmen, his drugs, his evil, what we're left with are scenes of Frank the Madman appointing, appointing himself as the wrath of God and smashing people senseless. When one of the three stooges gets, of course, here we go, comparing it to something else. When one of the three stooges get beamed with a wrench, it's funny. When presumably actual characters are maimed and possibly killed, not so much. This is the last paragraph. Super plunges into nihilistic despair in its third act. This isn't a black comedy because it isn't a comedy. It's a trick played on our emotions, I concede, but to what end? Is there any requirement that a film develop organically from beginning to end? No, there's no rule book, but audiences feel uneasy when they feel toyed with. I'm all for movies that create unease, but I prefer them to appear to know why they're doing that. Super is a film ending in narrative anarchy, 
exercising a destructive impulse to no greater purpose than to mess with us. Finn. Sounds like he didn't like that he couldn't foresee this movie playing out the way he thought it would. Yeah, it sounds like this movie tried to uh, go against the grain of every other movie, and he hated that about it. Yeah. He still gave it a two, though, and I think that two out of four, and not like a one or a half a star out of four, comes from the fact that, like, he said it himself, this clearly wasn't, like, the movie he thought it was going to be, and that's because of that he disliked it. But I think the two stars, which he's so loosey-goosey with these stars, I, th- I think the two stars are like, it's good, though. I didn't like it, but it's good, though. Yeah, it's almost like if he had a better system, we'd have a better understanding <laughs> of what the late, great Ebert thought of this film. But we don't. We can only guesstimate that he liked it between 35 and 50%. <laughs> uh, yes, precisely. Um, He really did fuck himself. With the four stars thing. And he could have changed it at any point. At any point. No one would have judged him. No. He wouldn't even have had to have made a big deal about it. Like, just one day we wake up and we're like, oh, he's doing it out of five now. Yeah. Stellar. Or ten. Or ten or a hundred. Like, a... a, a <laughs> if you're going to go a hundred, have it be a percentage. Well, yeah, yeah. But, um... Five, ten. Five or ten. Yeah. And, and I don't know. You get it's, the point across. Well, you got to think. There's a... There's a system that we've put in place on how to review things, but our our dude was born before that system was put yeah. in place, probably. So, which is sort <sighs> of a joke. Um, but you know, the man was what, like eighty eighty seven or like in his early nineties when he died in twenty thirteen. I'm not gonna look it up again. You know what's interesting too is that's old Ebert. He's usually much more lenient in his later days. Are you sure? Yeah, remember he he peaks in like the eighties, then the nineties. He's he watch out if you're a kids movie because he's gonna <laughs> rip on you. Yeah. And then like around Transformers time, he's like, I'll enjoy him. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. Yeah. There's. <laughs> I mean, going just going off reviews that we have read. There was Rocky, and then there was Pokemon the movie, mm-hmm. and then there was Finding Nemo, and now here we are at. Super and Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Yeah. <laughs> Where he's like, ah, movies. Yeah. <laughs> I wish he saw Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> that's that's my biggest regret for <laughs> Ebert's life, is that he never saw Scott Pilgrim. He had a fucking quote where he was like, "It, I'm not interested. It seems like I'm not missing much. And I'm like, fucking take oh, a so vacation he some other week. He was on vacation. And he missed Scott Pilgrim. And wow. he was like, I don't think I'm missing out on much. Solid. <laughs> And it's like if you if he gave Super two stars and was like this movie was weird I didn't know what to expect and I hated it because of that but I still liked it I think that's exactly the review he would give Scott Pilgrim yeah yeah I agree anything else you wanted to say about Ebert and his weird review of no the movies <laughs> no no you're usually so much more I know I just at some point you just get upset. <laughs> At least this one wasn't so fucking boring. I forget what we were. I forget what we were. Uh, oh, Resident Evil. The Resident Evil review that he did oh, yeah. was so boring, and he talked about door slamming for like, <laughs> for like four paragraphs. Um, but yeah, I think that'll do it for us. Super was good. Uh, like I said, I personally have trouble recommending movies with so much gore, but like, if you don't mind gore, this was an okay. Yeah. It's an okay movie, but sort of like Ebert said, don't expect a chuckle fest. Right. It was a. It was a. You know, it was a James Gunn movie. I don't know how else to put it. It was a. It was a non. Uh, licensed James Gunn movie. So yeah. It was. It was. It was rather enjoyable. Um. Oh, there. Well, there is. I should mention just as a warning. There is a. A, a scene depicting rape, which is not cool, but. Oh, you're absolutely right. Yeah, so if that's something you're not into, definitely steer clear of this movie. But um uh if you if you like if you listen to our podcast on Brightburn and you watch Brightburn and you said I like Brightburn, go watch Super. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, basically. All right, and uh, uh I think that'll do it for us. So, yeah. until next time, I've been th- which one am I? Thunder. Uh, just kidding. I've been Thunder and I'm Lightning. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.